Good morning. Good morning, Joan. We don't we do not have uh, a pianist today, and we don't have a video, so we're going to go into the uh, opening prayer and announcements. But we have some uh, visitors back here in the back, and uh, welcome to Torch Baptist Church. This was a glorious day outside today. Let us rejoice and be glad in what the Lord made for us. So we will open with prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we really appreciate this day you have made for us. It's a beautiful day. It'll be 80 degrees today. Open our hearts, ears, and eyes today, Lord, for to hear your message. And just continue to wrap your arms around this loving family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, this week's brown envelope offering goes to Good Works. We have a uh, ladies' Bible study coming up at this Tuesday at 10 o'clock. There will not be happy volunteers for the next three weeks, right? Is that correct? Uh, we do have a Bible study every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. <coughs> April 17th will be, that's this Wednesday, we'll, instead of the Bible study, it'll be the uh, quarterly business meeting. So members and non-members, if you want to know what we're doing in the church and where our money goes. April 20th is a Saturday. Uh, teen night, 5 to 7.30 p.m. It'll be make your own pizza night. And on April 24th at 8 a.m., Pastor Brian is starting a an hour of prayer. So if you're available at 8 o'clock in the morning, the doors will be open. Brian, Pastor Brian will be here, and it's just to come in and pray with him and uh, if you're available. Uh... Mother-daughter's dinner is coming up May the 4th, 5 o'clock. Here's a sign-up sheet, if you would, so we kind of know how much food to purchase. But it'll be uh, taco salads, dessert, drinks. But it'll be May the 4th, 5 o'clock. And I'm starting something new, so... As you go out the door in the vestibule, to your left, there'll be a black box that's locked up, and there's little index cards out there. So if you have a, a concern with anything that's happening in the church or any comments that you would like to make, improvements you'd like to see, you could fill one of those out, put your name and number on it. I think I've got most everybody's number. But uh, kind of a little quote on what, what it is that's bothering you or what you'd like to see. And I'll pick them up after church on Sundays. They're, they're locked up, so I'll be the only one that sees it. So I'll follow up on your needs. I'll give you a call to discuss it. I'll follow up on your needs, and then I will get back with you, and it'll be anonymous. I won't give names out or anything with what I'm following up on. So it's just something new to get a little bit better communication going on. So if you're upset, we're not on the phone calling everybody else complaining and then it gets out of hand so but I would appreciate the first opportunity to do that so have I missed any announcements yes ma'am I just want to let everyone know that the happy volunteers will be taking a three-week break however we will begin meeting again on the 10th but in the meantime we are still raffling off the quilt for sumo youth initiative so if you haven't had an opportunity to purchase your tickets for this beautiful quilt, to have an opportunity to help out the children in Suma, Indonesia, um, please see one of the happy volunteers or some of the other ladies who have volunteered to help sell tickets. And in my absence, for those of you who are selling tickets, if you need more tickets, Helen has extra tickets. So she's going to be taking care of that for me for the next three weeks. So thank you all so much. And they're five for 20. Five for 20 or $5 for one. There you go. All right. Do we have a praise team? Yep, we got a praise team. The praise team? Yeah. Well, we didn't have the video, the, the little video they played at the beginning.
Well, as they come forward, let me just um, start us off here. Um, if you guys don't mind, we're going to sing a new song. <clears throat> and as we look at the throne room of God here, um, I just want to read from you from Isaiah 6. It says this, In the year that the king Uzzah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraph seraphim, each had six wings, with two they covered their, fa their face, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And the one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And so why don't we stand as we sing, Holy Forever.
more second how great is our god sing with me how great is our thank you we thank you for how great you are we are here today because you are great, you are holy, and we worship you this morning, Father. We ask that you be blessed by what you hear here this morning. In your son's name we pray, amen. amen. You guys could have a seat, and kids, you guys could head out with Miss Carrie. You guys are going to go next door, so let me not forget this, and I'll try to remind you again later. When you pick up the kids, pick them up at Covenant Hall.
Good morning. Sometimes we just need to sit around and think, meditate on how great our God is, don't we? Awesome. Today I'm reading scriptures, Revelations chapter 4. And after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open to heaven, in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were ablazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had the face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around. Even under its wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For your creature, for you created all things, and by your will they will be created and have their being. Amen. Amen. Let's have the ushers come forward, please. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for life, for blessings, dear God, that come from you that we can't even imagine how great you are, dear God, how good you are to us. And Lord, as you prosper each of us this week, dear God, may you bless this offering, both gift and giver, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Stand and sing doxology, please. today, but that's okay. We've got some people that's under the weather and uh, some that are dealing with some health issues and what have you not. So, But we're thankful that the ones that are here are here and and uh, for those who are watching, we appreciate you watching us. So uh, this is our time of the service for prayer and praises 
And apparently I haven't done the uh, offering for a while, as you know. <laughs> Usually other people are doing that, and I kind of watch them, and it's like, hey, okay, you need to remember what you're supposed to do, aren't you? <laughs> Anyhow, so if anybody has any prayer concerns or praises, please let them be known, and we'll present those to the Lord. Anybody? Ms. Sharon? What his status is. Mm. He's got to have the van towed and, and uh, get a new van and how much damage it did from his project, his books and stuff in the back. And so we ask prayers for him. All right. Thank you. Yes, Miss Darlene. Now the rest of us have to worry. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you don't do the car wash. <laughs> I was going to say with or without the car. I was <laughs> I was or mentioned her this morning as I knew came through the prayer chain. Yes, Gary. Uh, yep. Yep. We've got some that are. I don't think hers. Yeah, fluid behind the ear, I believe, or behind the eardrum, and so very painful. So yes, Helen. Everybody and hugs Cliff whenever she sees him, but 
Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're gonna go visit this evening and uh, and see them for a few. He said I need to go check her out. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Yes, Barbara. I said you remember my husband. Uh, he's leaving this morning to go turkey hunting. He loves this time of year. It's a melancholy time for him because it was near this time that um, his dad passed away. And this is something they always love to do together. So I'm thankful that he's still able to go and spend some time with his friends. And um, but also remember us as we leave Thursday morning. Don't be shocked when we're not here for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, but, but just pray your prayers for God and mercy. It's just a lot of relaxing. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. This traveling mercy as well. I'm headed down to Texas Thursday, and I'll be out next weekend and then back. For yep. Go check on Mama, huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, Joan. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. My friend has rheumatoid arthritis right now. She's doing good, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Not a fun thing. <laughs> All right. Anybody my, else? Uh, my little shadow, for those of you guys who were here last week, um, know who I'm talking about, Charlie, <laughs> um, has came down with strep. Um, so just remember her and that whole family, Carletta and everyone. They, they, it just seems COVID and everything, one thing after another, they're trying to make some progress and Satan's attack. And so just remember that whole family in their prayers. Thank you. Yeah, for those who don't remember, <laughs> she corrected Brian last week. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it's, it's just amazing that, you know, we think they don't hear. They're not paying attention. But, boy, she got pretty <laughs> to the point with you, didn't she? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Anyone else? Yes, sure. I forgot to mention uh, John's daughter Tammy had a wisdom tooth uh, done, pulled surgically, removed uh, this past Wednesday, and she is having a lot of problems with that, and she's really swollen and mm -hmm. allergic to the antibiotic, and <laughs> says they're heading back to South Dakota on Friday. Yeah, this coming Friday. I Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Joe. I'm sorry. That's um, all right. I just got a Honda Helix. This is a scooter. I just would like your prayers, your safety. <laughs> <laughs> For you and everyone around you? <laughs> <laughs> I had one before, so it's not like I'm afraid to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you see Joan out in, out in Belfry and riding a scooter, you'll know who it is. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? It's good that we can come together and laugh and fellowship in God's house. So it is a uh, great honor. So, all right. Let us hear the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that you give us, Lord, to come into your house and to fellowship with other believers, Lord. And, you know, the prayer concerns that have been mentioned, Lord, you've heard each and every one of them. 
Lord, we can, you know, you know, mention them again. Lord, we just, uh, you know, be with uh, uh, Josh as his, his uh, van, Lord, hot on fire, and just uh, give him safety. And uh, uh, Lord, just uh, make a way for him to continue to travel about. Uh, you know, we believe in that because we believe in you. And Father, just ask that you be with the others that were mentioned. We have Shirley, Lord, she will be having uh, testing and possibly a heart path. And we just ask that you be around her and her family and the doctors and everyone involved. Father, we just thank you for all that you do. And Lord, we just uh, remember Susie. And uh, Lord, we ask that you be with Tammy and Scott today, Lord. That, uh, you know, she has a chiropractor appointment tomorrow that she can get relief from back pain because, you know, for those who go through that, uh, Lord, it's not a it's easy thing and and uh, it's kind of just a tough situation, Lord, it, but you can make it all better in your time and your will. Uh, others that were mentioned, Lord, was Ray Lynn and Lord, just be with her and her recovery. Uh, you know, she loves to play sports, but Lord, that may be you know, a different avenue that she has to go now, Lord, and uh, just uh, be with her and her family and those decisions that have to be made. And Lord, Lord we just uh, thank you for all that you do. Uh, Lord, just uh, be with Joan's son, Josh, and, you know, in his travels over to the Middle East, Lord, just uh, uh, keep him safe and uh, secure and uh, under your wing, Lord. And Father, just uh, all those that were mentioned, Father, we ask that you, uh, we lift Israel up to you, Lord. Uh, Father, that uh, your hand would be upon them. And Father, we just uh, ask that you be with our uh, leaders of our country, from our president all the way down, Lord. Just give them uh, wisdom and discernment and uh, let them look to you for decisions that need to be made, Lord. Father, we just ask that you be with our service today and be with Brian as he brings the message. And Lord, we just thank you for all the many blessings you bestow upon us, Lord, that we just don't even realize. And Father, we just thank you for that and forgive us of our shortcomings. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We get an update. Uh, love the little dings that Windows gives us on our computer. Um, <clears throat> God is good, and um, this morning we're going to look at Revelations chapter 4, which Roger read to us just a few moments ago. And as we look at that, before we get into that, um, glad to have everybody here today. Also want to mention, glad to have everybody watching online and at home today, but at the same time, if you're, if you're local here and you're not sick and you're not healthy, we just want to remind you that it's good to be a part of the body. Um, I was just talking with the, um, the kids yesterday at soccer, and, and it's you know, relating how we're supposed to be a team in soccer, and we're supposed to be a team, and we can't be a team when we're all at home. So we want to encourage you guys, if you're at home, if you're not local here, here find a local body where you're at, wherever you're at, just get involved in the church um, where you're at. Um, we titled the message this morning, Worship His Majesty. <clears throat> As I read through this passage for the last several months, I, I've thought the, the song came to my mind, and you guys already heard me sing enough over the microphone today, and that's a, enough. But majesty, worship his majesty, kingdom of authority. You know what I mean? That, that, the, the old song we used to sing, you know, we need to worship his majesty. But what does his majesty even mean? What does majesty even mean? Majesty is simply the greatness or the splendor of quality, the, the character of that person. We are to worship Jesus Christ and God, the God of all the universe, because he is full of splendor, is he not? He is full of greatness. That's why we sing, how great is our God. That's why we sing, holy forever, holy, holy, holy is our God. That's why we continue to sing these things, because he is separate from all of us. And then as, as we enter into this, this next section, we're going to begin to, you know, we started off with a, a brief um, kind of synopsis of what was going to happen in Revelations in chapter 2. 
and, and on. We looked at the letters to the churches, so we've been going through these letters to the churches. And, and now we're going to kind of take that last transition. I say last transition, but we got a long transition into the rest of Revelations. And this is where it gets fun. Um, this is where it starts. So you start to get the squirrel, the squirrels, the, the scrolls and the trumpets and all these different things. And, and we're going to start looking at all those things. But we're going to see this word a lot, this word like. We, we, we say that, and John's going to use the word like. And whenever we see this word like, remember we talked about at the very beginning, there, there's like, and then there, if he doesn't say like, he's normally talking about that actual thing. But a lot of times he'll say like. We'll see that today. Um, he'll use the word like a lot. He's trying to relate what he's seen in heaven to something we might all understand. And so this like, the word like means nearly the same. It, it means li- the, the similar to um, as an appearance or a quality. And so as we look at this chapter, just keep that in mind as, as we see these words, because it might not necessarily be, as we're going to read in a few minutes, a rainbow that, that's an emerald. But he's trying to explain to us of something we can understand as he sees this. That's why he says it's like an emerald. And, and so let's look at chapter 4, verse 1. It says this, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the voice which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. So like I said, we're doing this transition period. We we talked about the churches and and the church age. And now he's saying, look, I'm about ready to tell you what's going to take place. What's coming? What's to come? And this is where we get into the nitty gritty side of Revelations. But before we do that, we're going to look at the throne room of God. In verse 2 it says, at once I was in the spirit. Why was he in the spirit? Why was he in the spirit? Well, what what did God tell Moses? No one can see me and live. So if, if, if John went to him not in the Spirit, he's done. We're all done when we see God not in the Spirit, if we don't see his attributes and we see God for who he is. So he went to him in the Spirit. And, and it says, And behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. Just imagine, just just that alone. I mean, you get to heaven, and you see a throne, and the one seated on that throne. That one is the God of the universe, and Jesus Christ. What What's your reaction at that moment? Let's not even get into everything else we're about to read. Just the fact that you get to see the throne, just even seeing the throne of God. It's just like... Ah, oh, right? What else can we say? And he, in verse 3, And he who was set on the throne had the appearance of jasper and carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that, that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the throne were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, and rumbling and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. And the first living creature was like a lion and the second living creature was like an ox and the third living creature was with the face of a man and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight and the four living creatures each of them with six wings are full of eyes all around within and that day and night they never cease to say what holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne. Now, when is that? When, we just read that answer, right? And, and whenever these living creatures gave glory to God, when, when, when was that? We just read that. 
all the time. They never cease to give glory and honor. So this is happening constantly. So what else happens? It, it says, And whatever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lived forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne, and they worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, O Lord, and God, to receive glory and honor and power. You created all things, and by you they existed and were created. There's so much there, and as we put ourselves in that throne room, we, we, we see this, this, this appearance of Jasper. Jasper, we got, I think Renee got some pictures for me. So Jasper is this reddish-brown mineral and so this is something that would have been very relatable to them. So you can see the brilliance. Isn't it amazing the stones that God gives in us and, and the creation? And how, I mean, you, you look at the dirt and you're just like, everything's just brown, right? And in there, there's so much more. So you got Jasper, you got Carnelian. We got some pictures. And, and I love the, both the examples, the definitions. They're both brownish red. And I'm like, well, they're a little bit different. You know what I mean? But this is a more of a Carnel, uh, Carnelian stone. And it, it's a little bit more orange and bright. And so you can just imagine seeing that he's trying to relate to what it was custom to them. Then you have this, this rainbow that, that was like an emerald. And we're familiar more with the emerald, this ruby green, uh, ruby green, I don't even know if that makes sense, but that's what comes to my mind, this, this bright, brilliant green stone. You know, we got to worry about me sometimes. But, but, <laughs> thank you. But, but, so we have all these things. And so you just imagine putting yourself in that place. And then as we're in that place, there's these 24 elders. And what are these 24 elders? I believe they represent the church. I believe they represent the church because just in a little while, we're going to read in verse f or chapter 5, verse 8. It says this, And when he had heard the squirrel, the four living creatures, and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are what? The prayers of the saints. These 24 elders represent the church, wh whether they're in representation of it, if it's a church, whatever. But, so you got these 24 elders, and they are clothed in what? White garments. They are clothed in white. Why are they clothed in white? Because of pure. And how are they made pure? By the blood of Jesus they were made pure. There was nothing that these 24 elders had as humans that wasn't because of Jesus. There's nothing that we have that wasn't and isn't because of Jesus. And the reason why we're able to be made pure is not because of any one of us, right? Because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But we are made pure by the blood of Jesus. And it tells them tells us that they all lay down their what? Their crowns. You know, at, in Scripture, you have several different types of crowns, and it, it's just kind of crazy, and we don't have time to go through all of it this morning, but you have what's called the incorruptible crown, um, which, which is the um, crown that, that, that's imperishable. You know, there's crown, he talks about crowns that perish, like we get, well, might get a crown in, on earth, a reward on earth, but guess what's going to happen with it? It's going to burn, right? But these are imperishable crowns that are never going to die. We, we have the crown of life, which is given to those who, who go through trials and who go through these things. We have the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of rejoicing. And the thing about these 24 elders, what they do by showing, by casting their crowns, anything good that they were given, they're saying, look, Anything good I have is because of you, God. These 24 elders show by casting their crown before God that they owe all their achievements to God. The Apostle Paul also acknowledges this, that no one can take credit for the spiritual results he sees. None of us can take credit. It's all God. It's all Him so in this picture of this throne room in heaven, what do we have? We have these mystical creatures worshiping God with eyes all around them that look like all these different things, and they all had one job. We had 24 elders 
they all had one job. They were made to worship, right? We are all made to worship. Now, why do we worship? The question. Before we get there, what worship is not? Worship is not a song that we sing. Worship is how we live our lives. Devoted to Him. We sing great songs. Worthy is Jesus. Worthy is God. Holy. How great is our God. We sing all these songs, great songs, but that is not the end all be all of worship, is it not? Worship is how I live my life. Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says this. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What is Paul saying? My worship is me saying, I lay down my life. My worship is me saying, God, whatever you want, whenever you want it, wherever you want me to go, it's all yours. See, the problem is, is so many of us, you guys ever seen that sacrifice that said, nope, sorry God, I'm getting up off the altar. But that's what we do, isn't it? We, we lay our lives down before God and say, God, you got it all. Well, not quite that much of it. God, I need some of it back. We're like trying to pull ourselves back off the altar because that's our fleshly self, isn't, isn't it? That's what, that's what we do. But, but what is our spiritual act of worship? To present our bodies as a living sacrifice to say, God, you have my life. Not this corner of it, not that corner of it. You have my life. See, we're, we're not here in the throne room yet, and, and, and when we get there, I mean, what our response will be, it's just going to be amazing. I mean, it's, I, I've heard Sunday school teachers talk, well, what are you going to do in heaven? And, oh, yeah, you're going to play video games. You're gonna, and I'm just like, I'm going to be standing before God Almighty. I'm not going to care one thing about a video game. I'm going to be standing before God. I'm not going to care about who won the football game. I'm going to be standing before God. I'm not going to be caring about anything I can or can't do. I'm standing before God Almighty. I'm going to hit my knees and fall on my face. If I even can stay on my knees, I might just be laying prone face first on my face because God is worthy. What is our act of worship, though, here? It's to lay down our lives and say, use me however you want. In Psalm 63, 1 through 4, it says this, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in the dry and weary land where there is no water, so I have looked upon your sanctuary. Behold you, your power and your glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift my hands. We are to worship him wholeheartedly with every ounce of our being. Why? Because he is worthy. Why do we worship? To give him glory because he is worthy. And how do I worship? Sometimes it is standing here, hands lifted high, worship him, singing a praise song to him. Sometimes it's getting down on our knees and just praying, but what he wants is our lives. He, he told that over and over to his disciples, right? He told that over and over to the people when Jesus was here. He said, unless you take up your cross and follow after me, you're not worthy of me. You can't be my disciple. He says, you need to give up everything. The rich young ruler came to, came to him, what? And he said, well, I followed all these commandments. I followed all these rules. I've done. 
He's like, all right, sell off everything you have and follow me. And what does it tell us about that rich young ruler? He turned around and went away sad because he was very rich. How do we live our lives? Do we live our lives in worship? Part of my frustrations in life anymore is, and, and we all struggle, and it's, it's frustration not with just other, it's with myself, is that, that battle that we fight, right? That I want to give you everything. We, 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 I played a song for you guys uh, on a Wednesday night a couple weeks ago uh, about what if I gave everything to God? How would my life be different? When we were young, we had dreams. When we were, when we were, we had these, I was going to, and the song starts, I was going to run high into the battle with my sword raised high, and I was going to go, and I was going to fight. But now I'm set here on the shallow end. But isn't that what we kind of get caught up doing? God has a plan for each and every one of us. And I'm going to say he's probably put a dream in each one of our hearts at one point in time. It might have been years ago. And we might have gotten hardened to that dream because, well, reality sets in and the bills come in and the, 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 the obligations come in and all these things start coming and we've got to do certain things. And we've forgotten about that dream that God gave us, how, how we could reach people, how we could share Christ with people, how we could do those things. God's given us those dreams for a reason. So we could reach people for him so we could share christ with people there, there's so much talk about well invite people to church invite people to come in here and yes invite people to come but guys when i read this we were sending people out we were sending people out to go share christ with people uh, i might be a paid pastor here but god's called you to share christ with people too he, he hasn't called you to say, invite you to come. Hey, I pay this guy to share with you guys. Come listen to him. Nothing wrong with inviting people to come to church. Nothing wrong with that. However, at the same time, we've got to be willing to say, well, God put my neighbor on my heart today. Let me just go tell him, ask him how I can pray for him. And you open that door of communication. And that you showed them that you cared for them. You cared about them. You know, that, that co-worker who, who you see, they walk into work and they're just having a really bad day. Hey, you doing okay? Sometimes it's as simple as that. Are you doing okay? Is there anything I can help you with? Can I pray for you? And it's amazing. Then, then it's just like, sometimes it's just like blah. And you're like, what did I just get myself into? But that's the opportunity for God to begin to work if you're willing to be used by him. We need to go and tell. We need to send people outside of these walls and to say, no, I'm going to go tell people about Jesus. Because I can only talk to so many people in this room. There's a limit. But if we all go out and we're sharing Christ with people, imagine the difference we can make. And, and when you're their kids, right, the stats are overwhelmingly, people, most people decide to follow Jesus. I can't remember the age now, but it's getting younger and younger. And, and so, but if they don't know it before then, but the, most, the majority of adults or teenagers that accept Jesus don't come from a pastor preaching at them. Come from their neighbor sharing Christ with them. Come, come from a mother or father sharing Christ with them even later in their life because something's changed or, or sharing with your mother and father. That's always a weird one, isn't it? It, it, it? It's weird to go to your mother and father and share Christ with them if they don't know them. It's weird to be your father's pastor. I mean, it's just weird. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it doesn't need to stop me from sharing Christ, right? We have to do so. And why do we do so? Because it is our act of worship while we're here on earth. Because this is what's going on in heaven right now. There is worship to an almighty God right now. And right now, yep, there are times I sing my songs. But what pleases the Lord more than me laying down my life and saying, here I am, God. Use me. Let's pray. 
Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for who you are, for what you do in our lives. Here we are to say, use us. In the, in the vision of Isaiah, he said, here I am, Lord, send me. And so that's what we are saying now, God. Here I am. Send me. I want to go for you. I want to fight for you. I want to be willing to put my life on the line for you. Because you are worthy, Father. Father. You are God of all, and you control all, and you know all, and you understand all. You're just it. You are the greatest of all times. You're the greatest from the beginning to the end. You, you, it's just you, Father. And so, Father, this morning we give you praise, but we don't just want to give you praise here on Sunday morning. We want to give you praise with our lives, and let our lives be a living sacrifice for you. And your son, say me pray. Amen. As the worship team comes forward, we're going to sing a couple more songs. And um, as we do, as always, I'm here. I would love to pray with you. If I'm taken up, I know my deacons, the deacons would love to pray with you. I mean, we're, we're here for, we're here for each other.
as we get ready for the next song here, just, just remember God is holy. He's set apart. He's above all else. It is him that's worthy to be praised as we praise him this morning. Why do we praise him? Because he alone is worthy to be praised. God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, for what you do in our lives. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor once again, for you alone are worthy. Go with us. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment in all that we do, and help us to share your love with the lost and dying world. In your sons, we pray. Amen. Real quick, before you guys leave, we're missing a couple people, but Jared and Heidi, who are not here playing hooky this morning, if you're watching online, shame on you. Everyone look back at the camera and say shame on them. <laughs> we miss you guys. We miss you guys. But also, um, Jared and Heidi and Jeff and Julie both um, have joined us as members of the church, so I'm going to invite them um, to stand back with me as we, you guys leave and love to shake their hand. Welcome into the family. <laughs>